Old electromagnetic activity hold the key to the madness that is war and revolution. You lie strapped to a bed. 800 milliamps of electrical current pounds through your brain. Your depressive numbness is slowly replaced with elation. Miraculously, your suicidal brain has reprogrammed, but no one understands why. Electroconvulsive therapy, or ECT, is still used in severely depressed patients with predictable, if cloudy, results. But in Royal Hobart Hospital, a new electromagnetic therapy, RTMS, uses pulsating magnets of 1.5 tesla in strength to achieve relief from intractable depression. This spectacular new therapy changes the brain's mood and drive. But how can electromagnetism do this? Can a changing electromagnetic environment affect your everyday life? The brain's electrical nature was first measured in 1924 by the Swiss eccentric Hans Berger with his invention of the EEG machine. The brain produces microvolt discharges of incredible complexity. The whole body is a vast electromagnetic synchronized labyrinth. Even neurohormones rely on ionic connection or electrical polarity to function. In fact, the brain can be sent haywire. Bionic imbalance brought about by seasonal weather change. Fred Soika recognized the effect that electrically charged atmospheric ions had on mental states. For instance, certain areas of the world at certain times of the year experience dramatic behavioral and psychological change. The Middle Eastern wind, known as the Sharav, literally sent many people bananas. Amazingly, magistrates even allowed for the wind's ability to bring on symptoms from aggression to depression. The Sharav is literally a hotbed of excess positive ions electrically affecting people's lives. In our own Melbourne, irritable hot northerlies echo this. But this is a relatively mild departure from normality. Our own sun is a major determining factor when it comes to weather. Henrik Svensmark believes in fact that cosmic rays, which are positive ions, are the major driver of weather and thus should have a major influence on our minds and bodies. How does it do this? Henry Svensmark explains it this way. Our galaxy is full of high energy cosmic rays mainly produced from distant stars. This part of near space, the sun's heliosphere, acts as a shield against these high energy cosmic rays. If you have a change in solar activity from coronal mass ejections, sunspot activity or solar flares, this moderates the cosmic rays. Typically, from a CME, it drops 10%. Visualize the event that happened in 2003, where you have this ejection of, 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 of plasma. This is the Earth, this is the Sun, and you see these two clouds coming out here. And uh, I think it's, uh, you know, it's a matter of a, a day or two before it reaches the Earth. Uh, then you have a drop in the cosmic rays. What happens when a cosmic ray enters the atmosphere? Here's a simulation 16 kilometers above a city. Here we have a high energy proton entering the atmosphere and as it does, it cascades and produces a billion or so secondary particles. And this is where the cosmogenic isotopes are formed in the nuclear reactions occurring, such things as carbon-14. Changes in solar activity from whatever cause dramatically affect cosmic rays. This, in turn, affects the cloud cover on the Earth. Notice on the graph how the cosmic ray concentration closely follows the cloud cover. From 
coronal mass ejections, the CMEs, the solar flares, the sun influences our planet with chaotic electromagnetic stimulus. It's even postulated that these excessive electromagnetic discharges directly affect our demeanor, attitude, behavior, and yes, sanity. The collective brain of the human race might become overstimulated. Could it then degenerate into erratic and aggressive behavior? Can electrical chaos send us to war? An episode in Australian Aboriginal mythology supports this bizarre theory. Mungan's fire, which is widely held to represent an aurora australis gone crazy, is blamed by the tribal elders for terror and war. They despairingly lament, Mungan's fire filled the whole space between the earth and the sky. The Kuanai of the Gippsland region would shout such words as send it away, do not let it burn us up. Men went mad with fear and speared each other, fathers killing their children, husbands their wives and brethren each other. Traditionally, we explain war as folly rooted in mankind's stupidity and greed. But Claude Schaeffer, who studied the demise of civilizations, is famously quoted as saying, those great crises will explain better than before the historical development of the most ancient civilization and its mechanism and they will definitely take out of the hands of man the command of the great historical happenings we thought he possessed. Electromagnetism from the cosmos rules us far more than we're led to believe. Keep us filming by subscribing for only $10 a year. You can then immediately watch all the episodes available. Then join us in the journey and actually help us as we make new episodes every month.